Hello everybody! So today I went to the Lifeline Canberra Book Fair and this is my mecca guys. It's super exciting. So every three months, like seasonally, Lifeline, which is a suicide prevention, depression kind of helpline, they have this charity event where people just donate secondhand books, DVDs, CDs, puzzles, etc. And it's like super duper cheap and this is when I do like my binging. I don't, I try not to buy books too much but this is my one exception. So I'm going to show you all the books I got. I also got some DVDs so I'm going to show you those as well. The DVDs. First we have My Cousin Rachel and I saw the trailer for this. It looks interesting. It's about like these two Jewish women who are actually in love with each other but it's like forbidden and yeah just a schmozzle but I'm a schmozzle I want to be a part of girls it's okay next we have the merchant of Venice and it's got Jeremy Irons and Joseph Fiennes so that's, that'll be fun you know actor and I've read this one so I will actually be able to make sense of it yay then following the Shakespeare trend I have Midsummer Night's Dream with Helen Mirren I believe yeah I haven't seen this one. But yeah, I was in Midsummer Night's Dream end of last year, so this will be really exciting to just be like, oh, I know that. Next, still in its packaging, is Table 19. This is another one that I didn't really get around to seeing, but I'm like, I'm keen to see Anna Kendrick. And you know, all these DVDs are only like $3 edus, so it's a pretty good deal. Then I have this show, The Borges, with Jeremy Adams again. He's wonderful. And this is a show I started but didn't finish, and I would like to, so now I have it and I can do so. Next is a classic from, I don't want to say my childhood, like my tween years, and that's St. Trinian's, because it's dub bomb and it's so fun, and boarding school shenanigans. Another childhood tweeny film is Cadet Kelly with Hilary Duff. This was so fun. I still remember there was this part in the movie, like she goes to military school, and she has this like rainbow knitted blanket and you know, I spruce it up a bit and they just kind of like rip it apart because they're like, no. And yeah, I'm pretty sure there's romance because there always is. Next is The Valley Season 1. So this is kind of similar to Josie or Geordie Shaw. And I think they're Welsh. But yeah, this is something I've seen like casually on TV but not often because I don't have Foxtel. So my sister and I are going to devour this because it's just so trashy. Alright, we have more DVDs. Now we're going to the musical DVDs. I collect musical DVDs because I love musicals. I want to be in more musicals and they're just lots of fun. So the first one is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I haven't seen this one since I was... Who knows how old. I was very young. And also this is the next kids musical I'm going to be helping out with. So this will be good to just like rehash and know what's going on. Next is one called Gigi, which I've been wanting to watch for ages but haven't found anywhere, so I was like, ah, hells yeah. So that was exciting. I think it's it's a romance where I think he's like, ooh, be my mistress. And she's like, and at the end she gives him an ultimatum being like, no, you either like all or nothing. And then I think he's like, you're right, babe, let's be together forever. And it's cute. But it's probably going to be a bit problematic, but you know... As long as it ends happily and they're all good, it's okay, right? Next, I'm gonna have to check if I already have this, but I figured, you know, it's three bucks, whatever. That's Easter Parade with the, the one and only Judy Garland. And Fred Astaire, classic. The next in like a fancy AS case thing is the West Side Story, because classic, you know, cool. And this is the last musical I did, like a junior musical I helped out with, and that was Cats. So I'd seen, I've seen this version before and I didn't know anything about Cats except that it was a big deal and I was just watching it like what the fuck is this but through doing the show I kind of love it and I've been I like right after the production I was just like watching and watching clips from the movie and I was like dude they always have this at the book fair I'm gonna get it and I did. And the last one is a beloved, but that, that I don't own, that I'd like to watch more, which is Moulin Rouge. This is another one, I think the first watch I was a bit like, what? And that was before I was immersed 
into musicals as much. But you know, it's beautiful and it's visually stunning. Next, I rated the sheet music because I wanted to get some some vocal selections from musicals and I was not disappointed. So first I have Sound of Music. Sound of Muse. Ah! And then I have Wicked. Which I was like, hell's yeah, five dollars, yes please. And the next I have is a Fiddler on the Roof. After that I have Addy, get your gun, because I love this musical. Next is Sweet Charity, because it's so fun and there's some great songs. The one and only classic, Les Miserables. Just kidding, I know it's Les Mis, Les Miserables. Oh, Miserable. I don't actually know. Then Rocky Horror Picture Show. I fucking love this, so hells yeah. Also, how cool is that artwork? It's all like, ooh, cartoony, fun. And we have Grace from the movie, yes. The next one's just like a compendium for, it's the Young Women's Edition. So it has like some really good songs for me. And a lot of them I know, because sometimes they just put really random shit in these. And I'm like, but this is, looks like it's a good one. I'm going to save the YA novels for last. So next I have some plays and theatre books. So I just have like a theatre history book, but it's like, it's hefty, it's got pictures. Hells yeah. And I got some absurdist drama by like UNESCO and Edward Albee and other people I don't know yet. Then something called Translations by Brian Field. Bingo by Edward Bond with a picture of Shakespeare. What does it mean? Ah yeah. Something called The Maids by Jean Genet. A Respectable Wedding by Bertolt Brecht. By Thomas Middleton, Women Beware Women. The Perfectionist by David Williamson. Got some YA, got some middle grade, let's get into it. So the first thing I found before I even got into the big hall was just like a table and it had like Enid Blyton. Look, I haven't read a lot of Enid Blyton, but I do remember reading The Faraway Tree when I was in primary school, like eight years old, whatever, and I loved it. So I went picked up the collection for the Magic Faraway Tree and like it's a bit creased on the spine, probably can't see that but you know that's just, it adds character, it's not falling apart six dollars for the whole thing it's good. Alright, anywho's so there's been this deal going on with series of unfortunate events because we have most of them at home because my sister read them all but for whatever reason, we're missing just two. And for like every book fair I've gone to, I've been meaning to complete the series. But then the last time, I went and bought like the same one again. And it's just like, oh, sometimes I don't have them. Or I'm just too caught up with my YA. But guys, I did it. So I now have books five and nine, which are The Austere Academy and The Carnivorous Carnival. The only downside, I mean, you can't really complain because how much did I pay? I paid $3 for a hardback, but the child that had this before has like drawn in pen all over it and like on the back. And it's. What does it even say? I don't know what that says, but yeah, it's like already got inscriptions and stuff, which most of them do. You can't really complain. And then this one from, from Elliot. Thanks, man. Glad you're not using it anymore. And that's that. Alright, now the hardcore YA. So, I do have a copy of this book, but it's my mum's. And I like this edition better. So, I went and picked it up for four dollar dues, which is the book thief. I need to read this, I know. I have a plan. I have a plan. I have some World War II Holocaust books. I'm going to read back to back. I'm going to try to. It might be too sad. And to just be immersed, because I find it really intriguing, like, it's kind of bad, it's like an exploitation kind of thing. But it's not that I'm like, oh, it's the best, it's just intriguing and fascinating. Same with, like, I read some books about cults, where it's just, like, so messed up, but I love reading it. So, and it helps. I don't know, it's like, it helps that it's fiction, but it's very much based, rooted in history, so... Yeah, next up I got this book I haven't heard of before, which I don't usually do because at the book fairs it's just overwhelming amounts of books, so I just kind of like search for my things 
that I know are good and that have been like all over booktube and goodreads because I just I want to read everything but this is something I haven't heard of before and it's called The Uploaded by Ferret Steinmetz I hope I said that right and from what I can tell the gist of it is something in between San Junipero from Black Mirror and The City of Light from The 100 if you know what I mean, if you're familiar with those thingamajigs. If not, it's just that old people can upload their consciousness onto like a cloud type thing. But it sounds like, you know, gritty, dark things gonna happen. I'm a fan of Rochelle Mead. I have read Vampire Academy and Bloodlines and I've been wanting to check out some of her older series, including Succubus. Blues. I think it's the Georgina Kincaid series. I don't know. They're all start with succubus something. And I don't know. This one's a bit more adult. But I'm a bit more adult. So get some steamy awesome action. The next book is something I got from the library. But sometimes with the library I just abandon books. Because it's just too much pressure to read them that quickly. Especially with all the books at home I have. Sometimes I just read a bit and be like, nah, not now. But I couldn't resist. And I know that this gets a little buzz and it sounds interesting. And I got me a hardcover of Three Dark Craft, guys. For three dollars. This isn't, this is illegal. This is insane. The next one is also a book I read at the library. And I just decided it's time to own it. And that's Red Queen. I really enjoyed this. I think it was like slow at times. But like the twists and like the world and magic system was kind of cool. So I do want to try and read the rest of them. Because I did try to read... So Glass Sword, is that the second one? But it's just been too long since I've read this one and I just couldn't get into it. And I was just like, nah, not right now. But hopefully one day I can read them all. Next I have A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluis. Or clues. Who knows? So this is like the vibe of this one is like, ooh, she's the chosen one, but plot twist turns out she's not, and mystery and magic and shit. So yes. The next book is a book I already own, but only on ebook. talking about is We Were Lies by E. Lockhart because I just I do prefer the papers and like if I want to let, loan this to someone I can just be like here you go instead of like here's my cobra. This is the last one and that is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. So I've read the Knife of Never, Never Letting Go trilogy. The, the rest of us just live here and they were pretty good. I like the arc the Not Letting Go series was a bit like, what? Same with Uglies. I was just like, what is, where, what, what are you doing? I don't understand where you're going with this. It's too many things. But I've heard this one's good. And if I read it, then I can watch the movie. So that's fun. I mean, I was a bit hesitant because like movie cover. But it's not a bad movie cover. And you know, it's cheap. I'm a cheapskate. I'm going to pay $3 for a book. Even if it's in a shitty condition or as a movie cut. That is all the things. I'm not going to try and hold them up because it's too many. But yes, I hope you enjoyed looking at the different things. And I will try and read them all at some point. We'll see. Okay, bye!